this crest so it's sort of appearing itself quite nicely. Mm. What time period are we looking at here? About 260? A little bit before 260, yeah, probably about 263. Okay. About that. 263 million years. <coughs> and that's based on a series of these sort of tuffaceous horizons for which we have dates. Not from this particular farm, but from a couple of farms uh, a bit further west. So you're sure this wasn't buried in a flood 6,000 years ago? We're not really sure. We're not really sure. We have to deposit it. This work is important because uh, uh, there's, particularly in understanding mammalian origins, there's an unsurpassed record of uh, therapsids in this country. It's probably the vertebrate group that best documents the evolutionary development of one form into another. In other words, uh, from basal tetrapods through to mammals, and you can follow it through the whole group stratigraphy. So the Karoo stratigraphic sequence in the world is, uh, is, a, is, is a, an icon for world paleontology. It gives us an understanding of how um, one form developed. One type of form gives rise to other forms through time. And so traces the evolution of, of species through time. Okay, so everyone gathered around this uh, around this table, aside myself, of course, are all notable scholars in your field. And I just want to bring up that there was a uh, there was a senator in Tennessee who said last week that there is no solid proof that the Earth is millions of years old. What would you say to him? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that there's a lot of proof that we've, that, 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 that we've got very good dating techniques and there's a lot of proof that the world is billions of years old. Um, that's from very good dating techniques. And I'd like uh, to ask what are we doing over here that proves that we are just right. Well, we're fortunate uh, in the So the minerals formed at the time that magma cooled uh, and then are ejected from the volcano. And a certain, there's certain ratios of, of elements in, in those crystals at that time. And some of them are radioactive and they decay at a known rate. And so we're looking then at ratios of the parent isotope of uh, certain elements, uh, daughter isotopes of different elements. And that allows us to, to date the, the age of that, uh, that mineral, and by extension, the age that that horizon was deposited. And that's very useful here. And, and uh, by getting sort of good samples, a number of grains that have a similar age, and the youngest population thereof, we sort of can work out the age of that, that horizon. And then we can look at the, at the spacing of those horizons throughout the sequence, and look at sort of the, the passage of time and how much time is represented in those rocks. And that provides a framework on, onto which we can place the evolution of the animals uh, that are preserved in those rocks. And we've had great success in this part of the Karoo Basin on that. So we've got for the oldest Beaufort group rocks up to about 266 million years and going up to 260 million years for this big extinction. And the, the nice part is when we send our samples away for analysis, they come back in the right stratigraphic order, the oldest at the, at the bottom and the youngest at the top. 
So that's no coincidence. That is because it is like that. Oh, so this rocks. Bottom, and yeah, this rocks. So there's a fossil. So what's important there, I think, uh, is that so very often there, there is the mistaken assumption that we use the fossils for dating. We use the fossils to, to correlate and maybe order the sequence of, a stratigra of different stratigraphic horizons that we already know follow each other. So the fossils are there to confirm the stratigraphic order, or we use them to confirm the stratigraphic order. But the dating, the, the dating that Mike talked about is completely independent. So the, the as and as Bruce uh, said, it could come back in a completely random fashion, and it does not. Like the, the dating could come back with dates that do not that do not follow each other or that are completely random. They do not. They are perfectly ordered in the stratigraphic sequence and confirm that what we say from the fossil and from the lithology uh, is is consistent. So what you're saying is you use the index fossils for relative dating to show which one, which strata is older or younger than which other strata, but the actual dates in terms of numbers of years yeah. come from radiometric dating and those are absolute. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, the, and, and we use an independent dating laboratory to do that for us. In fact, it's, a, it's, a, it's MIT in the States. And you never get a, you never get a sequence. You never get a strata that is in the wrong age, or that's that's too young to be. The, 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 the date shows that it's too young to be in that order. Either. That never happens. We haven't had that yet. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can <laughs> guess that, uh, that, uh, that 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 things could go wrong in laboratory also, but we have never had a date coming out in the wrong succession yet. Well, it, with the radiometric dating, there is a phenomenon um, known as lead loss. So it can be that with less um, accurate techniques, if you get the loss of one of those daughter isotopes, the ratio between these two isotopes shifts a bit, and so it can give ages that don't quite make sense. Um, the technique that we, we use it uses chemical abrasion and then uh, thermal ionization uh, so spectrometry, and that is that has shown the existence. But you're not using carbon dating, are we? <laughs> no, no, carbon dating wouldn't be very useful. Uh, why would carbon dating not be very useful? Uh, the half-life of um, the 14, 14, yeah, is it kind of 14, 14, 14. Really? So, yeah, uh, is is much too short. So it decays to sort of levels that are negligible and cannot really be detected. I think it only w was affected up to forty thousand years. Or something. Yeah, 40 so years. so we, if it's only forty thousand years, then carbon dating would only be used for archaeology mm. and not for paleontology. But I've noticed that the people in my country can't seem to distinguish archaeology from paleontology. They kind of think they're the same thing. So there, there are, as I understand it, a, uh, a couple dozen maybe, or at least a dozen different radiometric means mm. of dating. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then... And they do, and, and they are, it's not our, my speciality at all, but there are other methods that are not radiometric. And, and the interesting part is that when you date the, uh, these r different rocks, you get similar dates from different uh, types of data. So they can't be too far off. But that's, that's important. When you overlap all the different means of radiometric dating, and then plus bars and ice cores and all of the other, and, and dendrochronology and all of the other non-radiometric data, you still get an overlap yeah. where they, they all sync. Yeah. And it's getting better. Uh, you know, Ten years ago, it wasn't as developed as what it is now. All these techniques are developing all the time and getting better and better. And we're getting, I think, quite good resolution on these rocks. Here. And to that senator in Tennessee who said that there was no solid evidence that the Earth is hundreds of millions of years old, I realize you're a religious person, and that means you have to make believe in a realm of pure imagination backed only by alternative facts. But if you have to lie in defense of your truth, then it was never truth to begin with. And what you've actually seen is that we have several different independent fields of study that are collaborating, corroborating, interdigitizing, and confirming each other. So to prove that we have 
literally tons of rock solid proof just that terrestrial life on this planet is hundreds of millions of years old and of course that the planet itself is billions of years old. You don't just represent a few people in your congregation. There are thinking people under your jurisdiction who are honest enough that they want to know how things really are. I'd like to see you correct this misstatement of yours, but I know that creationists don't correct their mistakes. They just keep on lying even when they know better.